Star Wars is now 40 years old, and it's hard to overstate just how much impact it's had on our popular culture, especially science fiction in that time. 10% of this show is already about Star Wars for force sake. Star Wars almost single-handedly determined what a space opera would sound like and feel like and maybe most consequentially look like. Think about it. What does hyperspace look like? Star Wars has their version. What is science's? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I guess I'm done. According to Star Wars, making the jump to hyperspace looks like this. Starlight rapidly elongating along the direction of travel, streaking across the cosmos as Han and Chewie evade star destroyers. But as Nico D'Angelo asked me on Twitter, according to physics, what would you actually see if you went 0.5 past light speed? As far as we know, you can't go 0.5 past light speed or past light speed at all because a lot of weird things happen when you get close to 300,000 kilometers per second. First, time stretches out for you relative to others. Space itself contracts and you get heavier. Look. I'm heavier. In fact, when you get close to light speed, you get infinitely massive, which means it would require an infinite amount of energy to move you. We can't do that. So there's no going 0.5 past light speed, but that's all right, because even if you get close to the speed of light, light itself will change. All radiation in the electromagnetic spectrum, like visible light, has a wavelength or a distance between two waves. It also has a frequency how many waves pass a certain point in a certain amount of time. Both wavelength and frequency are dependent on each other because the speed of light in a medium is constant. The radiation that we can see has a wavelength somewhere between 400 and 700 nanometers. This contains all the colors of visible light. But considering that the entire electromagnetic spectrum runs from thousandths of a nanometer to hundreds of meters means Visible light takes up a very, very small sliver. <laughs> this means that even small changes to the frequencies or wavelengths of visible light will have a big effect on what you can see. <laughs> you can change the apparent frequency of light by moving towards a light source or away from it. To us, the frequency of light is how many waves hit our eyeballs in a certain amount of time. So if the Millennium Falcon here traveled towards this light source, it would hit more waves than it otherwise would if it was motionless in the same amount of time. This amounts to a higher frequency of light. This is the same thing as a light source coming at you if you were stationary, relatively speaking. So if a light source was traveling towards you at a significant fraction of light speed, the light would also change color. This lightsaber, for example, is putting out a reddish light. If this lightsaber was moving a significant fraction of the speed of light in this direction, then observers on this side of it would see the light blue shifting or moving towards the blue end of the visible light spectrum from an apparent frequency increase. Observers on the other side seeing the lightsaber moving away from them would see the light red shifting or moving towards the red end of the visible light spectrum because of the apparent frequency decrease. But if you were going hyperspace speeds, light wouldn't just apparently change color. It would also apparently move. I want you to think about moving towards light at these speeds, like running in the rain. If it was raining above me, the raindrops are falling straight down, and because I am stationary, it looks like they're falling straight down. But if I was to start running, now to me, the rain looks like it's hitting me on an angle. And if I start sprinting, now I could swear that the rain is hitting me almost horizontally, even though in reality, it is falling straight down. This difference between our speeds makes it appear like the rain has shifted. Just like the rain when you run, if you move towards light very quickly, everything will change and warp. But not like this. If you really made the jump to hyperspace, three things would happen. First, the apparent frequency of all the starlight you could see would blue shift. In fact, if you were going close to the speed of light, starlight would blue shift so much that it would become violet and then ultraviolet. 
Starlight in hyperspace would be invisible, not streaky. Second, the radiation that we can't usually see, the radiation left over from the Big Bang, the cosmic microwave background radiation, would be blue shifted so much it would come into the visible range, changing the blackness of space to a hazy blue. Lastly, and at the same time, everything that you could now see would warp. Just like the raindrops in our running in the rain example, all of the light in front of you would warp into a kind of blue shifted cone. So taken all together, this is what hyperspace would really look like. When you made the jump, all the stars that you could see would change from bluish to purplish and then go ultraviolet and disappear, while at the same time, the cosmic microwave background radiation would appear to you as a hazy blue and then warp to form a sort of cone in front of you. This is what hyperspace looks like. So, hyperspace wouldn't look like the brilliant streaks of starlight that Star Wars wowed us with 40 years ago, but in reality, it would look even cooler. Stars changing color and then disappearing, the radiation that pervades the entire universe, once invisible, now making itself known to us, light itself warping in front of our very eyes just to account for our immeasurable speed. <sighs> These are just awesome consequences of physics that apply even to galaxies far, far away. Because science. <laughs> Gotta shoot first. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at SciFile where you can suggest ideas for future episodes like this one and on Instagram under the same handle where I'm now posting mini episodes or you can go to my Facebook page and check all of those out because I do it for you. You specifically. Yes, you. Kevin. No, it's pretty cool. A group of students at the University of Leicester in the UK actually did all of the math for the hyperspace stuff, and you can see what they came up with if you, if you check out the show notes, and they have a lot more surprise, lots cyber. <laughs>